Hey, my name is Mohamed Darab, and in this video, I will walk you through deploying a SQL Server big data cluster on a single node Kubernetes cluster. Now, if you have any questions, concerns, or you come across any type of issues, leave them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I definitely want you to be successful in doing this so you can have an environment to dive a little bit deeper into uh, big data clusters. So, let's get started. We're going to start with the prereqs. Now, the VM will require eight CPUs, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and 100 gigabytes of storage. So, however you get that done, that's what you will need in order to do this video. Now, I don't have that compute power. I don't have that much memory on my laptop. I have a Surface Book. I have a Mac Mini. I don't have 64 gigabytes of RAM. I don't have eight CPUs. So what, what did I do? What I did is I went very old school and I went to eBay and I purchased this exact server actually. I uh, purchased this off of eBay uh, about a month ago. The link to this exact server is actually in the video description. So if you would like to do your own research and potentially get something like this, I, there's a good starting point for you to do that. But I purchased an HP ML350P Generation 8 server. It has 320 gigabytes of RAM. It has two 12 core processors, so that's a total of 24 physical cores and a little over one terabyte of storage. That's more than enough to play around and mess around with big data clusters uh, that will allow me to further my knowledge with it. So I got that and now the issue comes to software. Now for software what I did was I decided to install vSphere or ESXi on the base server. So it's running as a hypervisor, running ESXi on it. And I downloaded Ubuntu Server 16.04 and I have the links for you there in the slide deck. Also at the same time it's in the video description if you want to go ahead and download those as well. So that's, that's uh, what I'm using. Now, my assumption to you is that you have already installed some type of hypervisor. Again, if you are going down the route that I am, that I have gone, or you have a VM with those prereqs. Again, eight CPU, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and minimum 100 gigabytes of storage. That's my assumption that you have that ready. And you have also downloaded Ubuntu Server 16.04. So with that being said, let's get started. I am super duper excited. Let's move this out the way and I will bring over this. Now, when you install ESXi on the base server, it spits out an endpoint. You access an endpoint via URL. I'm using Safari. You log in and you can create all your VMs uh, through that. So let's go ahead and log in. And this is my host. This is my ML350P Generation 8 service you see right here, right? Uh, 24 CPUs and 300. 300 gigabytes of, of RAM, which is, more, again, more than enough. So we go to virtual machines, and then we can go ahead and create virtual machine. Click uh, create a new virtual machine next. And i not really that great at naming, so I'll just do mine BDC01. For guest OS family, let's choose Linux, and then go as a guest OS version. Scroll down to Ubuntu 64-bit. Hit next. This lets you know your storage. And then this is where we will have to make sure we choose eight for the minimum CPU count. The memory will choose that to, uh, change that to gigabytes and then we will put 64 gigabytes of memory. Hard disk, I will do 250. And then I wanted to point out one thing right here is you click on this uh, CD, DVD drive or however your, uh, maybe you have a VM admin Tell them to make sure that you put the ISO uh, there, make it available. Click on data store ISO, and then I choose 16.04. So I up, have uploaded this prior to this, so it's there. Otherwise, you can just do upload and then go down and get your file. Hit select. Next. This little summary of what's going on. Hit finish. And there you go. Now we click on it. Now everything here is related to this. Let me just X out of that. And I do power on. And then it'll go ahead and go through the process where you install Ubuntu Server 
One thing I want to say is that this will take some time, so I'm going to pause the video and resume it once everything is installed on here. Just go through the defaults of everything and get it installed. Make sure that there's an option to install Open SSH Server. Click that so that's installed. You, you can install it afterwards, but it's easier to just get it installed during the installation process. So make sure you get that done. And then, yeah, that's all we need. I'll go ahead and get that installed. And then once it's up and running and at the command prompt or the login screen, I'll go ahead and resume the video and then we'll go from there. So the server was installed, everything was installed, it rebooted. Now we're at the login screen. What I do right now is I go ahead and log in with my username and password. I'll do an IPA real quick and I'll check the IP address. So it's 192.168.86.180. Uh, okay, that's cool. So now what we can do is I will go ahead and bring over Azure Data Studio. Yay! Okay, so there's Azure Data Studio, right? And if you're not familiar with Azure Data Studio, you got to get with the times. Download it, play with it. It's going to be the go-to utility and tool that you use for big data clusters. So the beautiful thing about, or one of the beautiful things about Azure Data Studio is you can actually use, because it's integrated shell, you can SSH right into the new server from the Azure Data Studio. I don't, I don't need to hop back and forth from a different utility. It's all right here. So you have your scripting up here, and then you got your terminal down here. So what I'm going to do is we're going to SSH into the newly built Linux or Ubuntu server. And then we're going to execute the script that you see up top, which will go ahead and get everything, uh, the process running for deploying that single node Kubernetes cluster and then deploying big data cluster on top of that. So that's 192.168.86.188, I think it was. Yes. Good. So now we are at uh, the prompt for the server that we just built. Now what we're going to do is the first thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and apply all of the updates on the machine on the actual server. So we're going to do that via this command right here. Go ahead and do that. And then paste it in there. And put in our pseudo password. And that'll go through the, the whole update process and we're going to go ahead and reboot it. So what I will do is, I think this will take some time, a couple minutes. I'll go ahead and pause the video. You, ought, you go ahead and get this done. And then when, when it comes back to the problem, we're going to run this right here. We're going to reboot the server and bring it back up. And then I'll go ahead and resume the video and then we'll move on to the next steps. So the update completed. I rebooted the server, which if you see here, pseudo system CTL reboot. It disconnected me obviously and then I had to SSH back in and now I'm logged back in right here. So now the server is updated and everything is good to go. Now we're gonna actually go down and do the whole process of running the, the script. Now one thing I wanna mention up top, if you probably already read this, all scripts can be found at this website right here. So Microsoft has made it very, very easy and they've uploaded a script, a deployment script to configure all this. Now, I highly recommend that you go through this and read through the script and kind of get an idea of what it's doing. It is a pretty lengthy script and is creating some variables, is downloading Docker, all the prereqs for Kubernetes, is setting up the storage, it's installing the uh, Kubernetes cluster, and you see that, you see all the, everything that the script is doing. But what we're going to do, we're going to actually execute the script, and let's start off by we're going to first run this command right here. So what we did is we went ahead and used curl utility and downloaded this setup-bdc.sh, which is located at that link right there. So that link right there, you just take that link, go to the browser, type it in, and you'll see the entire script. In fact, let me actually bring that up before we even do anything further moving on to number two. Let's actually bring this here for you one second. And there we go. So this is that script. Here's a raw dot get. This is that URL that we just downloaded. So this file we downloaded. 
Now, it's a pretty lengthy script. Like I said, it goes through a whole bunch of things here, setting up some variables, setting up, uh, again, variables like the directories, the PV, the PV count or the persistent volume count, which is 30. And you learn a little bit more just looking through the script and seeing what exactly is happening as soon as you execute it. And then all the way down at the bottom, you see it runs the AZ data uh, BDC command to configure everything up. So I highly recommend you go and check that out on your own time. But when I execute this setup bdc.sh script, that's what it's doing in the background. So let's move this out the way. And we already went ahead and downloaded it. Now what we're going to do is we're going to give it the, the, the rights to be executed. Because when you download the file initially, the security default is that you're not allowed to execute the file. It's an executable. You're not allowed to do that. You have to give it the permission. You have to modify the permission, give it that, per, that, that uh, permission, and then you can go ahead and do that. So that's what we just did. Now what we're going to do is number three. We're going to go ahead and execute that script. And here we go. And then we're going to use the pseudo password. And now create password for big data cluster. You can use whatever password you want. And I was going to go through the whole installation process. There's nothing really you need to do after this. I mean, that's the beauty of Microsoft giving you this script. You can break the script down and run each individual piece and get it working but it's all there for you. You don't need to reinvent the wheel, especially if you're just starting out, you want to get this up and running and focus more on the, the visual and getting into big data clusters and seeing what you can do here and there. This is the easiest, the fastest way to do that. So this is going to be running for 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video and resume once everything is up and done. And then we're going to dive in and see how it looks. So I'm super excited. Okay, so the big data cluster has finally been deployed. As you see here, uh, this is the endpoints. You have the gateway, you have the Spark job management, monitor dashboard, application proxy, management proxy. The, the thing we, we wanna connect to is right here, the uh, SQL Server master instance front end, which is this IP address right here. So I'm gonna get that right there. And I'll go ahead and copy that. Now what I'm, I'm actually going to um, minimize this like that just so you can see the login screen. And then we're going to go ahead and connect. And we'll type in that or paste in that IP. We'll keep it as SQL Server login. Now the default is admin, but then you put in the password that you chose when you first kicked off the deployment process. Right. And I just click uh, remember password and hit connect. I can go ahead and hit X over here so we can uh, remove the terminal. And here you go. This is your, uh, just like you log into a regular SQL Server. You have your security objects right here, login, server roles, all that type of links, servers, uh, uh, HDFS specific folder right here. Let that expand out, right? Uh, and then you have your databases. So you have your system databases, master model, MSDB, TimDB. And then these are the, uh, data warehouse databases that are that uh, pre-populated for you to play around with uh, so this is your connection right here now this right here is the home screen let's, let's expand that just a little bit right there so on this let's actually minimize this there we go so you see you have the dashboard the version the edition developer edition just we're messing around here on a single node cluster uh, the computer name is master dash, dash zero because that you're logging into the master instance. You scroll down here, you see it, it looks familiar. If you are familiar with uh, Azure Data Studio, this is all it gives you the size for each database, right? Um, a little task you can pop out a new query, learn how to configure the dashboard, backup status, and then again, if you wanted to search through your databases. The interesting thing is this tab right here, the SQL Server Big Data Cluster tab. Now this has the endpoints right here. Also, if you if you get confused, you know what was the endpoint of the dashboard or this or that? They're all right there. Service endpoints. So let me just bring up this again. So all these endpoints that are spitted out for you are actually right here under the SQL Server Data uh, Big Data Cluster tab. 
And of course, you have your SQL Server agent. You've got jobs running. Data virtualization, if you wanted to create an external table to an Oracle database or Teradata, any other data source, and pull data in to your data pool or for, for caching purposes, that's what you can use this. Let me just X out of that. One thing I want to show you is a cluster dashboard for this video. So the cluster dashboard will go ahead and get the status of the pods, make sure they're healthy and you'll see green check marks if they are if not you won't so for example these are all little check marks here saying you know you're good to go with your spark sql server hgfs you can also dive into each one of those so if i click on spark here's your pod running spark head dash one that's one pod you have a storage zero running uh, that's pod number two sql server master instance you have the compute data storage right HDFS control or the controller and these multiple these multiple uh, pods and each one of these pods you have these controllers or these containers that run this, this specific service right so gateway and then your app so that's pretty cool you get the overview make sure that they're running nice and healthy uh, for troubleshooting if you click on this right here uh, let's use existing. Let's see if that doesn't. Oh, we have to install. I'll I'll do that in a different video. I'll cancel that. But the good thing is right here is that you can actually see all the different notebooks that Microsoft has provided for you to troubleshoot. For example, right log analyzers, right diagnose, repair, monitor your big data cluster. For example, show the BDC endpoints right oh it keeps going to that i'm gonna have to install that um, but in a future video we can go through each one of these notebooks or a handful of them there's quite a few and see how would we troubleshoot a big data cluster but this right here it'll is go ahead and show you that to deploy a single node kubernetes cluster is fairly simple you just follow this video if you have any questions leave them in the comments all the links that are associated with this video or in the video description. I hope you like this. I hope it was beneficial. In future videos, we're going to be deploying a multi-node Kubernetes cluster and deploying a big data cluster on top of that on a multi-node uh, version of it. We'll be going through some of these notebooks and seeing how we can troubleshoot and look a little bit deeper into the big data cluster, the pods and containers and different services running on those containers. So again, Hope this was of some benefit up for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. Reach out to me and let's make this happen. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel, to the video. Really appreciate it. Until the next one, take care and hope you have fun.